NVIDIA has launched the RTX 4070 Ti, and its reception by the main channels has been less than… pleasant. After diving into the numbers, what value does this GPU offer? Is it that bad? And should you consider buying one? Let's get into it. Many of the larger tech tubers let loose and called this GPU out as a bad value. But if you watched or read the day one reviews, you got to hear the NVIDIA line. This 4070 Ti offers performance like a 3090 Ti. No one who cares about value would ever compare a 70 Ti product against a Halo product. Just like I would not compare a Toyota to a Ferrari, I would not compare these two GPUs. But the 3090 Ti was a shameful Halo product. NVIDIA burned all of its customers that bought the GPU at launch for $2,000 or more, as its price was slashed in half in a matter of months. That GPU should be mounted to the wall of shame, and it should never be mentioned in any comparison for value. Like I said in my last video, if you compare something to crap, you can only judge if that something is more crappy or less crappy. So I'm going to provide a proper comparison to the GPU it replaces in the 3070 Ti, and I'm also going to compare it to the GPU that was similar in price last generation and previously represented very good value in the RTX 3080. Let's start with the comparison against the GPU it's replacing in the 3070 Ti. The 3070 Ti has 6,144 CUDA cores, while the 4070 Ti has 7,680 CUDA cores. Now I prefer to compare the number of streaming multiprocessors, or SMs, as that is a more relatable number. The 3070 Ti has 48 SMs, while the 4070 Ti has 60. That's a healthy 25% increase in shaders. Next are the advertised boost clocks. The 3070 Ti is at 1.77 GHz, and the 4070 Ti is 2.61 GHz for a whopping 47% increase. For memory, the 4070 Ti adds an additional 4 GB to increase it from 8 GB last gen to 12 GB this generation. Finally, the power draw and power supply requirements are very similar. The graphics card power of the 3070 Ti is 290 watts, and the 4070 Ti is 285 watts. On paper, from the large increase in the number of shaders and the clock speeds, it should provide a huge jump in performance. For the performance comparison, I use data from two sources. Tech PowerUp, who has recently updated their test bench to an i9-13900K, and Hardware Unbox, since they use the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. I'll place links to their data in the description below. Since I want the comparison to be to the 3070 Ti, I normalize the data to that GPU. I also focused the comparison to other GPUs from last generation that represented good value, such as the RX 6800, the 6800 XT, and the 3080. Other GPUs that were $1,000 or higher are not included here. There are plenty of other reviewers who already provided those comparisons. Starting with Tech Power Up. At 1080p, you can see the 4070 Ti is on average 43% higher in performance in the 25 games they tested. The last Gen 80 series GPUs in the RX 6800 XT and 3080 are just under half that difference. Moving on to 1440p, which is the target resolution for the 4070 Ti, you can see that it is 45% faster than the 3070 Ti, and again, the last Gen 80 series GPUs are less than half that difference. Finally, at 4K, the 4070 Ti is 41% faster than the 3070 Ti. The strength of the 3080 and the Ampere generation at 4K is shown here as it pulls ahead of the 6800 XT, but it is still about half the difference from the 4070 Ti. Moving on to the 16 game average data from Hardware Unboxed, at 1080p, the 4070 Ti is 45% faster than the 3070 Ti. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti is 50% faster, and at 4K, that carries over for the same 50% increase over the 3070 Ti. Summarizing the data in this table, we can see the generational improvement the 4070 Ti provides over the 3070 Ti. At 1080p, the 4070 Ti is 43-45% faster. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti is 45-50% faster. And at 4K, the 4070 Ti is 41-50% faster than the 3070 Ti. And looking at these performance numbers, the generational upgrade is good, but not fantastic, where fantastic is 60% or more. Typically, if the performance upgrade is closer to 40%, 
I usually skip the upgrade and wait for next gen. If the upgrade is closer to 50%, then it could go either way. And if the performance upgrade is 60% or more, then it's usually a wow moment and very noticeable and justifies the upgrade. Of course, that does depend on the games, settings, and resolutions you play at. What about ray tracing? Tech Power Up has data on eight games with ray tracing on. After normalizing the data to the 3070 Ti, we can see the weakness of both RX 6800 GPUs. At 1080p, the 4070 Ti is 54% higher than the 3070 Ti. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti is the same 54% ahead of the 3070 Ti, while the 3080 is 25% ahead. And at 4K, the 4070 Ti is a whopping 79% higher than the 3070 Ti, while the 3080 is 46% in front. The larger gap is partially due to the 3070 Ti not being a very strong card at ray tracing at 4K. Looking at the summary table, you can see the improvements in ray tracing this generation are greater than the improvements in rasterization performance. At 1080p and 1440p, it is 54% better at 4K, and it is a whopping 79% better. Now let's see how the 4070 Ti compares to the RTX 3080, which launched with an MSRP of 699. Taking the data as before, I normalized it to the 3080 to see the difference. The tech power up data at 1080p, you can see the 4070 Ti is 22% faster. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti is also 22% faster than the 3080. Finally, at 4K, the strength of the 3080 at 4K resolution shrinks that lead of the 4070 Ti to just 16%. Looking at the hardware and box data, at 1080p the 4070 Ti is 28% faster. At 1440p the 4070 Ti is also 28% faster. And again at 4K, the strength of the 3080 at this resolution shrinks that lead to just 21%. Looking at the summary table, the 4070 Ti is 22 to 28% faster at 1080p and 1440p. And at 4K it is 16 to 21% faster than the 3080. The 3080 was the first mainstream GPU under $1,000 to provide 4K gaming at 60 frames per second in AAA titles. Could you imagine if Nvidia did not unlaunch the 12GB 4080 and went forward with this GPU at the 899 MSRP? The performance gain of just 16-21% to for 29% more money would not have looked very favorable. What about ray tracing? If we look at ray tracing and the 8 game average from Tech Power Up, the 4070 Ti is 27% higher at 1080p. At 1440p, it is 23% faster, and at 4K, it is 22% faster. One generation later, that's two years, these percentage gains are rather unremarkable. Having a generational upgrade in only the 20% range while increasing the price almost 30% would have outraged many in the community. By the way, if you like videos like this, Hit that like button, share this video, and consider subscribing, and let me know in the comments below if you are looking to upgrade to ADA or will skip ADA. Now let's see if we can come up with a value comparison. And the value section tries to answer the question, what performance am I getting for my dollar this generation, and is it worth it? To make the comparison on value, a calculation on the performance for your dollar must be established. I've done this calculation many times before using TimeSpy and the MSRP. To understand the generational value upgrade every generation, since the 70 series does not get released every generation, I used the 80 series and plotted the value since the Maxwell generation in the GTX 980. The GTX 980 provides 3.5 times by extreme GPU points for your dollar. The upgrade to the Pascal generation in the GTX 1080 provides 5.7 points per dollar. That's an increase of 63%. The upgrade to the Turing generation in the RTX 2080 was rather weak at 7.1 points per dollar. That's an increase of only 25%. Now the upgrade to the Ampere generation in the RTX 3080 provides 12.7 points per dollar. That's a massive upgrade of 79%. And just from these four generations you begin to understand why people like the Pascal and Ampere generations. Another interesting trend you see is that if you bought the 980 and skipped the gen, and bought the 2080, the value doubled. And if you started with the 1080 and skipped the gen and bought the 3080, the value more than doubled. And if you started with the 2080 and skipped the gen and bought a 4080, nope, 
no doubling here. The price of the 4080 would have to drop under $1,000 to see a doubling. If you want to understand my thoughts and pricing on the 4080, see this video in the link above. The Ada generation upgrade in the RTX 4080 provides 11.5 points per dollar. You can see this is a 9.4% reduction in value. This is a regression. This is what happens when you provide a 50% improvement in performance, but then more than negate that with a 71% increase in price. If we shift back to the RTX 3000 generation of GPUs from the 3060 to the 3090 Ti, you can see the 3060 is at 12.8, the 3080 is at 12.9, and the 3090 Ti is less than half of that at 5.7. All three GPUs on the right in the 3080 Ti, the 3090, and the 3090 Ti were well over $1,000. And all three of those provided the lowest value in that generation. All three of those, from a value perspective, are crap. In fact, the 3090 Ti was as poor a value as the 2080 Ti even though the 2080 Ti launched way back in September of 2018. And the 1080 Ti, which was considered good value at its launch in March of 2017, was better value than the 3090 Ti. So the trend of not improving on value from one generation to another is being transitioned from the Halo products down the rest of the stack to the 80 series and now the 70 series. Removing the low value GPUs from the chart and replacing them with ADA, you can see the generational value from Ampere to ADA did not increase. What the data tells us is that Nvidia will sell you a more powerful GPU, but you will have to pay for that performance. The RTX 40 series is not providing any additional value, just performance at the high end. And if you can get the 4070 Ti at 799, then it offers the best value of the RTX 40 series so far, by just a little, very little. And looking at Newegg, you can see many 4070 Ti's available and two that are at the 799 price. No one is buying these GPUs. They don't offer compelling value over the last generation. In my last video, I did a cost breakdown of what would be a reasonable cost, and that was firmly in the $600 range. If the price dropped from 799 to 699, and 699 was my top end price, then the value of the 4070 Ti would look more like this, and you would get 15.8 points per dollar. That would only be a 27% increase in value, so it's weak like Turing was, but at least it would be a better value. And look how that stands out. Ada does have some redeeming qualities like its efficiency, but I will reserve judgment until I've had some time with one. So when you get back to the question, what am I getting for my dollar this generation? The answer is, two years later, you're getting the same value as the previous generation. NVIDIA has to earn your business. They need to provide better value every generation, even if it is weak. The recent rumors on the 4070 and under GPUs are not looking good. NVIDIA has failed to provide a better value with ADA. And just like with Turing, ADA is looking like the skip it generation. Jensen's plan to raise prices is going, well, according to plan, just like he told his shareholders. Watch this video if you want to understand his plan and the reason for the increasing GPU prices. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.